Are you ready for some more videos? I'm gonna shoot them right here in my shed so you can see exactly where I make this stuff. Right here in my shed at my house with my dog. Here we go. Guys, let's make, hold on, hold on. better we're making a skin and knife I just wanted to kind of show you how I make those and what goes into it this one I've already started it is a drop point skin and knife hopefully you can see that I've already profiled it and done a primary grind on it this is stainless steel it's got weight reduction holes and um, and two pin holes and then I've etched it in ferric chloride which is acid and then stone washed it hopefully you can see that let's see if we can get a close-up so what we're going to do is we're going to put a combination of g10 liners and blood wood on the handle hopefully you can see this this has just got some wax on it so it'll darken up once we put some oil and finish on it and these are the uh, liners that I'm going to use. So basically it'll sandwich in between these two, just like that. So just an old belt, something that, you know, you're not going to waste money on a brand new one. But you just want to take the extra uh, material off here so that you know exactly <clears throat> what you're looking at. All right, so you can kind of see how I've already marked a little bit on here where the front of the handle is going to come. And it's not exact, but you need those guidelines to tell you <clears throat> where the handle is going to be. Because if you go on the drill press and you're drilling pinholes on this side like this, you want to make sure that you're going to have the whole handle. Because if not, then... If you're over here it's not going to be nearly enough material to cover this up so you don't need to have a jig like I have just to drill the holes but I like using this because you know I'm not making one or two I want to make a lot of them and I want to keep them secure and repeatable that that's the key here all right so now you can see We've got the holes and I've marked each one. It may be pretty obvious which one goes where, but who knows? I might get to this another day, another week, another month. And it will, the lines become real blurry whenever it comes to that. So when you got right and right, they want to go together and they should line right up. What I've done is I've sandwiched them together. You want to make sure that they are completely flat there's no gap between them because a millimeter of gap whenever you put them up against the metal blade it you're gonna see it and it's not gonna look good and I've got mine staggered just a little bit as you can see like this just to try to get the grain structure to match up on both sides and I've locked them down so they don't move they stay as sturdy and straight as possible all right so let's throw these pins in see how it fits falls right in you don't want it to be too loose and you'll be able to see the ring around it once you're done but you don't want it to be too tight to where you're fighting with it because you only have a little while depending on the kind of epoxy that you have alright so I think that's going to be good it's right here there's no ring around it 
because if there is you've kind of wobbled the drill bit and it's a bigger hole than what you need another thing too that you kind of want to pay attention to I know that I can control the speed on this thing going up or down but especially with this wood right here if you go too fast you can burn that wood up and cause this whole thing to not look so good so you want to go real slow take your time just have some patience and uh, it'll pay off in the end so I slow mine down about halfway which is 30 40 Hertz something like that uh, but I know that not everybody has a VFD on their belt grinder so let's do what you can when I was grinding this down I kept checking kept checking what that does is not only does it make sure that you didn't go too far and you can check your depth but it gives just a second or two for that material to cool down and you don't over burn it and uh, it, it's just a good practice to do and uh, also when I got done profiling it and I knew that they were the same size right here then just as a general woodworking um, technique you want to change the angle that you sand at to get rid of some of the the lines in the wood so once I got done going this way I switched this way just to prepare for our next grit and you want to go you don't want to skip any grits um, so I'm starting with an 80 right now and then I'll go to 120 220 320 and then uh, we'll see what it looks like from there all right starting to look a lot better you can probably see some of the gloss on it but I can still see the lines if you get really close no matter what you do on the belt grinder you want to keep the consistent pressure you don't want to be pushing too much this way or pushing too much this way you want to keep it real flat until you're ready to contour and shape the handle now each of these belts have a different weight on them so they're going to ride differently so you have to adjust the tension each time you change a belt just to make sure it's kind of riding in the center it doesn't have to be exact because we're not we're not going right off of the edge of the uh, platen here to shape anything, but you don't want it to be too far off of either side. This is really starting to come together now. Um, one thing that you always want to do is make sure that all of the material is cleared out of here. The thing that I'm using is uh, called a sanding belt cleaner. It's basically just a piece of rubber that you put on there and it cleans it right out. So what it is, the way sandpaper works is there's sand or grit or you know whatever material is stuck to this this flat paper almost it's got little divots and whenever those divots get filled up with dust and dirt and metal and all that kind of stuff it's really affecting the way that the belt cuts so you want to clean it off every time just to make sure and then I just kind of knock this off so that you know it's riding somewhat flat every time I'm going to do a little shaping just so it's pretty much there whenever I go to glue these things on I won't have to worry about whenever the blades finished everything's glued on and I go to the buffing wheel and I can't really get into this little crack to clean this up so I want that to be pretty much done before I get there and then I did a real quick pass on the uh, buffing wheel just to kind of give you an idea of what this is really going to look like Let's say you had a small gap between the handle and the blade and you want to get rid of that. Now we already know from making the knife blade that it's pretty flat, nice and true. So there's something on here. If you have a, a disc sander that just kind of spins around then you can move it back and forth on that to make it nice and flat. But this is just kind of the rudimentary way. Just put it on something flat, the sandpaper, and just move in a number eight motion and once you do that it will sand all the corners and apply the same pressure once this stuff is set you know that's it so you want to have everything that you need ready and accessible
All right. I use this stuff called G Flex Epoxy. Um, I do 10 hours because I don't like being rushed. You can do five minute or 30 minute. There's different ones. You can get them at Lowe's and stuff like that, but they all do the same thing. A lot of people are very liberal with it. Um, I like to do just enough because the, even the manufacturer of different epoxies will tell you less is more, essentially. Um, I've just kind of sanded these down again, 600 grit, uh, just to get all the dust and stuff off because you, you want everything here to be real clean so that it's not uh, stuff in your epoxy. Hence the condition of my hands, you know, be real clean. So I dip it in here so that the glue goes all the way through. And you've got your indicator here that it goes on the right side. Now those holes right here are for weight reduction, but they also serve a purpose. Um, you know, a little bit of epoxy right here. I put in there and it's a little bit more surface area for that to bond to. And if you've done enough of your fit test and the way it lines up, then it should line up just fine. <clears throat> but if it doesn't, just convince it. But you do have to be careful, in all honesty, with uh, with these brass pins because they are very soft and they will flare and bend. And it is not fun trying to do that with a mess of epoxy everywhere. I would not recommend it. All right, so as long as you're out a little bit on each side and uh make sure that it's nice and snug all the way through you can't see it on the video but make sure that it's as tight as you can get it and uh just clamp it down you can see just a little bit right here that's already squeezing out and that's fine it's going to do that the more you put in there the more it's going to squeeze out all right, here we are the next day. The epoxy's all set up, and you can see right here where the pins are coming through the condition of the epoxy. That thing's uh, fully dried up. Right here, I wanted to show right on the edge is where I cleaned out all that stuff before it's set up. <clears throat> because once it does, it's going to be really hard to clean that off without scratching your knife. And how I do that is as it's drying, I'll clean it up with rags, paper towels, or uh, even some toothpicks just to get down in there as close as I can to clean it up because you don't want to see any of that. All right, so I'm going to cut some more off here. And this, from this point forward, I'm going to use a brand new belt every time because you want it to be cutting quickly so it doesn't burn the wood and you just get a better finish when you use brand new ones I'll save the old ones for uh, you know other stuff that doesn't matter I'm also open to suggestions on how to organize the sanding belts if anybody has any ideas you could probably see down here where they just all kind of pile up together but it is what it is for now okay another thing that's really important is these brass pins specifically they get really hot really fast and since it's just a straight through connection if those things heat up it will actually heat the epoxy and the pin will come all the way out the other side or it'll start making your scales separate okay as we creep up on the final dimensions of this knife the lighting that you have is very important because if you have half the light It'll catch shadows, and you don't realize how deep you actually are. You can mess up something really quick like that. Um, also, when everything is square, you can see if one side of your scales are thicker than the other. And that's going to make a big difference whenever you get 
all the way done with this thing. So I think this side is just a little bit bigger than this side. So I want to be really careful in making sure that whenever I bring this down, I don't turn it one way or another. All right, so here's a good example of what not to do. I was just talking about using a brand new belt and this one clearly is not brand new, but I figured it would get me close and it did, it's starting to shape up. But uh, you can see back here, if I don't move fast enough, it'll burn that wood up. We can come back with a, a sharper belt, maybe even drop down a grit and uh, knock that burnt part off. It may bring this in just a fraction of an inch, but you gotta do it. All right, we're back over at the bench and um, you can see that I put some tape on here. You know, you can be careful and not touch the blade with any of the sandpaper, especially because of the finish that I have on there. It's going to be hard to repeat now that we have handle material on. Whenever the moisture gets in the wood, it actually raises up the grain and then you can sand that down and you'll do that over and over and over. The boiled linseed oil, um, it doesn't it doesn't set up and dry so it puts it in there and then you're sanding it off um, I don't have I'm not an expert on finishes but that's just what I always use and you can see really close that we still have a lot of marks in here we want to try to get all those out as much as we can another great thing about putting some oil on this is whenever you do start sanding it you can actually see it'll highlight where you're hitting and it'll tell you where your high points and low points are all right so we are at 320 grit right now it's really looking good but I just wanted to get a close-up on it I'm starting to sand with the grain now that we're getting into the finer grits because it's not really taking off material so much but it's more so almost polishing it the finer that you go so you want to go with the grain and a thing to keep in mind is the scratch pattern that is on here you can see where we have gone sideways and then we've come back this way you want to make sure you get all that stuff out because the finer the grit that you go the more that that's going to be visible and also too these brass pins with them being so soft and delicate we get real close on it you can see the scratch pattern in there too and those are really going to be a mirror polish whenever you buff it so you want to get those out as soon as possible all right so now we're all the way down to 600 grit i ended up going that far and um, took the tape off kind of got most of the grind lines out of the brass these lines here just from the masking tape that I pulled off they'll come out um, but I like the way it turned out and I put some more boiled linseed oil just to make sure that 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 wood has plenty of oil in it then I took a q-tip with uh, ferric chloride acid which is what this is etched with and then I just went down the spine of the knife to make sure that it, the color matches up you don't have to do that but is I, I like this to match this I don't really like when this is a nice shiny polished edge whenever this is not doesn't match for me you could stop right here and be done with the knife completely it's all up to personal preference but I'll probably put it on the buffing wheel to try to get this to look a little bit better and we'll do some close-ups uh, pretty soon you can take this all the way up to you know a thousand two thousand whatever grit that you have or want to go up to to get that mirror polish instead of buffing it um, but it's all in what the use is for the knives that I make I want people to use them and that's going to consider on two factors one is if it looks pristine you never want to scratch the knife so you never use it also the amount of time that it will take for me to do it by hand to get it to that level I will have to charge much more for that knife and not only does that limit the customers for me but also if, if I paid two three hundred dollars for a knife or more 
I'm not, I'm rarely going to use that knife. And I know a lot of people are also like that. So I like to keep it affordable and keep it to where it looks really nice, but you're not afraid to use the knife because that's what it's for. All right, guys, that's about it for the handle. It wasn't too hard. I took it to the buffing wheel, got a nice finish on there. I think it looks pretty good. And then I went over and put a secondary uh, bevel on the edge here and sharpened it up. It is razor sharp now. Let me know down below if you have any suggestions on what I can do differently or what you liked about this knife. Stick around for the close up and uh, we'll have to do another sheath video for this. So go ahead and go to my page and try to find that sheath video and tell me what you think. This one's for you, E.